In the previous two videos, we discussed the first two pillars of healthy trumpet playing, keeping your air forward while you play and playing in the center of the pitch. In this video, we are going to discuss the third and final pillar of healthy trumpet playing, playing with a resonant sound. Playing with a resonant sound is very similar to playing with a centered sound, but for me, the difference is that to play with a resonant sound, you really need to have a lot of support and projection in the way that you use your air. And I think that learning how to play with a resonant sound makes things like dynamics much easier. Your louds and your softs feel equally supported regardless of how loud or soft you're playing. My goal for this video is simply to share a basic exercise you can use to hear your sound becoming more resonant, and then also to talk about how to transfer that into your mental representation. As an orchestral trumpet player, playing with a resonant or a projected sound is incredibly important to me. It's the way that I can go about filling all of the space that I'm in, and it's also, practically speaking, really helpful in making sure that I'm not drowning out everybody else when I'm playing loud. This is a concept I struggled with a lot during my time at Northwestern University when I studied with Barbara Butler. We would be in her office and you could see out of her window there was Lake Michigan and she would have me stand looking out over the lake and just try to say, picture your sound as traveling all the way across the lake. And I would really struggle. It took me, you know, a year or so to really get a grasp on this. But finally, the imagery of my sound traveling was not as effective for me as the imagery that my sound was already on the horizon when I first released my sound. The idea behind this drill is that you're going to try to envision your sound starting in different places and you're gonna observe the result. I'm gonna use a C major scale to do this, but you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't really matter as long as it's the same thing in all three variations of this exercise. To start, you're gonna pick an object that's two to four feet away from you, maybe a music stand or a door or a wall or a chair. It doesn't really matter, but you're gonna play your chosen exercise and you're gonna pretend your sound and your articulation is starting at this object. You're hearing it for the first time at this object, not at your bell. The next step of this exercise is to envision something that's further away. So maybe you can look out of a window and you can look across the street and there's cars or there's trees or there's a neighbor's house, or maybe you're in a really big rehearsal room and you can see a wall that's pretty far away from you. You just want it to be much further away than the first object and you're gonna repeat the same exact process. Pretend that your sound and your articulation are starting all the way over there. You don't want to play any louder necessarily, but you want to think about your projected sound filling up the space. Finally, you wanna choose an object that's not in your sight line. Maybe it's the house you're living in, or maybe it's a vacation spot your family has gone on, or maybe it's your favorite restaurant. It doesn't matter, you just wanna not be able to see it. You can close your eyes for this example or whatever you wanna do, but you wanna do the same exact thing and try to think about your sound filling the miles and miles between your bell and that space. Again, you don't wanna think about just playing louder to fill the space, but rather that because your sound is starting all that way away, it's immediately just filling up everything. The experience I've had coaching this exercise and hopefully the experience you just had if you tried this out, was that each progressive variation gets more resonant. There's more fullness to your sound, maybe it fills the space a little bit differently. And this is an awesome thing to experience because it means that you're able to play with a more present, a more resonant sound without any added effort from what you were doing before. Once you've experienced this shift in your ability to produce a resonant sound, the cue of thinking far away becomes really helpful. And it's one that I use with my students all the time. I'll point across the room and say, play over there. 
But ultimately, when we're playing music, we don't want to be thinking far away or whatever cues we're doing. The cues help us find a sound, but ultimately we want to get to a point where we're just focused on the sound. To make this transfer, you just want to continue using this drill to find that sound, but over time begin to memorize it or to maybe describe it with words like full, resonant, dense, whatever you want. And then over time, you want to begin trying to just create a sound that is full, resonant, dense, or that sound that's in your ear. You want to begin trying to create that sound instead of thinking far away. At this point, you should now understand why a resonant sound is important. You should be able to create a resonant sound for yourself, and you should understand how to transfer that from a drill into your mental representation. We've now covered all three pillars of healthy trumpet playing. I broke down these three pillars in this way so that I could try to help trumpet players understand the component parts of playing a trumpet in a healthy manner. Over time though, these three pillars will kind of morph into two. One where you're just taking a breath with the air on the lips and keeping it forward, and then you're just producing a full, centered, resonant, beautiful, deep sound. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any value out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to the channel and we will see you in the next video.